Are you sure? I think you're up. I think I am up. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Happy to be here this morning. Um, we have a um, work session planned for you today. We're going to give you a quick overview of the capital improvement plan and then are prepared to delve a little deeper into the county recommended project. I'm happy to um, answer any questions that you might have along the way. Are we ready to get started? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we want to walk away with understanding the needs and the funding that's required to meet those needs. We're prepared to give just a high level overview uh, starting with this slide. I just wanted to remind you that specific projects related to ABSS or Elmhurst Community College are vetted through the Oversight Committee. We're meeting this Thursday, so if there are specific questions you'd like to ask related to those projects, we'd be happy to relay those back and present them then. So ABSS uh, requested about a little over $4 million in your pay-as-you-go general fund funding this year for the CIP. This is an increase up from $3.3 million in your current year. Their request included safety updates, um, which was some cameras, door access, fire safety, and some flooring um, improvements for asbestos removal asbestos abatement. Um, we had deferred maintenance of about 770000 That was including door and window replacements, facility improvements, and window blind replacements. We also had the coming bleachers in there, uh, which was um, requested at $325,000. We had some vehicle replacements for maintenance and activity buses for $480,000. We had playground and classroom replacements for 250000 and they're asking for an emergency contingency to be set up this year, which would give them $500,000 to take care of emergency needs, which would not require them to come back before the board for small items. So it could be you know, just small fixes that they hope to take care of on their own. Let's see. So that's what we had for Elements Burlington School System. On the Elements Community College side, the amount that we are recommending in Cago is 536000 This is also the amount that was requested by ACC, so we're fully funding that request. This um, would take care of some campus renovations and repairs at 200000 some campus safety upgrades at 100000 some equipment and vehicle replacements for $10,000, and some roof repairs, $26,000. And finally, some system upgrades that included things in IT, fire suppression, mechanical, and HVAC for 200000 That would comprise their total request. Are there questions about either of these educational partners before we start moving forward on county specific projects? Yeah, so you recommend we go from 3.3 to 3.9. That is what we're recommending in the take -up. They had a lot of needs. Um, all of them seemed very justifiable and reasonable. There was nothing um, really outlandish. I cut 100000 out of that emergency contingency in the recommendation, placing that at 500000 They had asked for 600 But other than that, the project-specific capital needs um, were pretty clear. And all of those had been discussed previously with us at the OSC meeting. Um, I had mentioned to you about coming to bleachers. Yeah. Just I had some other folks who came to ask about that as far as the timing. Yes. Um, I think that would start after the budget approved whatever is at 325 and I wanted to know if there was any way we could speed that up. Like go ahead and do that and then when it happens and passes put it back, take it out of general fund, whatever. Because if you wait till July to do the bleachers when football starts the next month, I, I just think that's really pushing it for the community of common when it comes to everybody that's going to be sitting in the bleachers. Mm -hmm. So that's just something to think about. I know I talked to you about that because I had yeah. several concerns about it. Yeah. So I think my response then was that the only place we could go for that amount of funding would be your fund balance. Right. 
if you wanted to advance that, then we would take this out of next year's um, budget. Well, either way, the timing that I'm right. concerned about, I just um, would hate for people to come watch their kids play football and they have no work to it. And it's a danger anyway, because it's kind of risky now. Just the thought, yeah, I just really did ask for that, that as his number one priority for next year. Yeah. But did not say anything about doing it before then. So mm -hmm. that's why. Well, I spoke with him at the last Board of Education meeting and he said that would be great if we could do that. But I thought I would just bring it up. Sure. Uh, Heidi. Yes, sir. I believe that you can find the money to fix these breaches in the current budget that Alamance Burlington School System currently has. If you would like me to show it to you, I will. It's up to you all. If you want to cut it out of next year and ask them to find it in current year funding, we can. Mr. Blackshaw now talk about the lithium. The only okay. thing I'm saying, Heidi, is uh, there is about $600,000 that ABSS did not use from last year's emergency thing on June 19th. I can show you $620,000 that they did not use. If they need any money to fix any bleachers, they, I can show you where they can find it. I certainly don't want to take it out of my general fund because that was not a budgeted item. I have talked to Mr. Hook and I have talked to the uh, people at Cummings High School. I understand the importance of this, but I'm not going to take money out of my savings account to give them money that they already have. I can show you $600,000 that they currently have to fix this problem. Okay. So do we want to remove that out of next year's well, CIV? just to go along with what Ms. Thompson said, I'm not so concerned about getting the project done because I know they have the money to fix it. I'm not going to reach in my back pocket and pull out money on my savings account to give it to them when I know they have the money to fix it. Now, that's on them. Explain the problem. I beg your pardon? Finish your explanation. About the uh, funding? Yes. Well, all the funding that I'm looking at came out of a budget that they gave us $490,000 for athletic training. I know for a fact that they only hired three. So that's $280,000 that we gave them that they did not spend. Now, if you want to go even further, I won't go to the coaches, although I know a few coaches' positions that were not filled, that the money was given to them for this. That's not many. I have spoke to a few folks. It's not many. I'll give you that. But let's go up to the big item. The big item was the teacher supplement. Now, out of Mr. Rogers' mouth at our meeting that we had, he told me, when I asked a very specific question, how many people do you have short on your staff? Now, the reasoning for my question was that I thought that this may be an opportunity to take some people that they have, hold, and we can take the people that we're going to have to rip and put in these positions. That's my, my goal about asking the question. Mr. Rogers gave me a number of 81 on that day. Go back and look at the meeting. 81 people that he is short. Now, all I did was just basic math. I took the lowest cost person in ABSF, and I used their salary, and I multiplied it by the, by the uh, teacher's supplement, which is 11.5%. But I did it. I came down. Well, I made it 10 to make math easy. I came up with almost $420,000 that ABSS has not used for these teacher supplements. Why? Because they didn't have any teachers to give them the supplement. So if you have 80 people that are short, I took a basic salary, Ms. Ms. Evans can correct me if I'm wrong, of $50,000 with a 10%, which is $5,000. $5,000 is 80, $400,000. So there you are. There's $620,000 they did not use that they have access to. Is that good enough? I think that's a good starter. Um, I've told everybody who will listen to this that this is where the money is, but no one wants to, to, to from the school system, wants to acknowledge it. So here we are getting ready to spend. How much is the bleachers? 325. 325,000. Well, I just showed you what 280 is sitting right now. I think Mr. Lashley and I are both uh, going around to find out and got numbers from 60 to 65,000, including removing the old bleachers. So I'm not sure why the cost for the school system is 325,000. Mr. Hook told me 300, so it's jumped 25,000 since he saw to me. I can tell you and, why that's the case. Well, he, he told me the reason why the increase was the removal. The removal was going to be more than they had anticipated. 
So is there consensus from the board to remove 325000 out of next year's recommended CIP and ask ABSS to use their current expense funding in the current fiscal year for the bleacher replacement? They certainly have the money. I, I wouldn't say it if I didn't know. That would be my okay. consensus. Now, that's not a consensus if it's one person. <laughs> I think you have two at least. That makes sense to me. I certainly don't mind fixing the bleachers. Sure. I, I went and looked at it with myself with a contractor who told me that those bleachers need to be replaced. So I would just suggest the school system be good. I said the contractor that you talked to give you a cost. He told me it'd probably be minimum a quarter million dollars, but he wasn't figuring in the removal. That was just a really lie on site. Right. He didn't know anything about this. My point is to please have the bleachers where folks can actually sit on them for their football season right. because they are a high school just like all the other high schools yeah. and regardless of how we feel about the school system there are children and I just really don't want to get that way about this because um, I don't think of anybody else is in this situation and this is a situation and um, we just we just got to make sure that we make sure that our families have somewhere to sit to watch their kids when they're on the football field because that's healthy, that's good, and you really want kids to keep staying in sports. And their moms and dads and grandparents that are cheering them on. That's the point. Well, absolutely. Everybody. But they have the money now. They should be fixing it. Um, I was just going to say, I'd like to see the bleachers get fixed too. I don't want to see this our kids starting out on season with bad seasons with family and friends that come to watch the games. Uh, but if you got the money and lap salaries, you're not going to spend that between now and the fall anyway. Okay. Let's use that. Are you talking about supplement or salaries? Because teachers, they're, they're funded by position. That's true. They don't give you Supplements, $10 yeah. per, and they don't have two teachers. <laughs> it gets so Sorry. complicated. It gets really complicated. That's true. Just a quick question about this real quick. The 3.3 capital spending for paying the previous estimate that they've been doing for the last, what, four years? Four and five, yeah. That, that, that comes out of the Davenport plan is not. It's represented in the Davenport plan, yes. Um, does the additional six that you recommend will be 600,000, mm -hmm. does that feed from, uh, the additional 600,000, does that feed from the Davenport plan too? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is not general fund money. That's correct. It's, well, it is funded through the general fund, but there are dollars available within the model that would support the $600,000 increase. With or without an additional six hundred thousand from the general fund. Without. Okay. Okay. That's that's important. I think for us to know. I I'd just like to see the whole board. I think before we start mm -hmm. thinking into making decisions. You know, piecemeal. Sure. So just to reiterate that, so that there's clear understanding when I say not coming from the general fund. So the Davenport model for the school system is supported through the upfront property tax that we had for the bond referendum as well as the unrestricted sales tax. And with taking on the additional debt service with the GO bonds and increasing this to 3.9, there is funding available from those restricted funds to support that increase. So this would take the uh, 3.9 back to about 3.575. Let me ask, I have had two of these. This is this is missing a copy. I'm missing a copy. Everybody should have one. You take the spare. We're good now. Okay. So we are going to shift to the county capital project unless there are any other questions related to the educational partners. What is the increase for the ACC? ACC is flat, completely flat, and that's what they had requested. Okay. All right, the county project then. 
I'm going to start with a project that's not as not included in your capital improvement plan, just to kind of get it off the table, and that is the courthouse addition. Um, I recognize that this is a major project that has large fiscal impact, but we do not have a decision on this project yet. So I did not have a number that I wanted to put in here as a placeholder other than we had discussed at the board retreat setting aside um, $10 million from your ARPA funding. So that is what we have at the moment. We're currently working with CRA Associates, the architect firm, to come up with some options for the board to consider. And going forward, if this project does indeed move forward, we would need an installment loan to fund the remaining balance above the $10 million. But regardless of what's decided in terms of the scope and the cost of this project, any site work or construction costs would not be realized in your upcoming budget. They would be coming to you in fiscal year 25-26. So it doesn't necessarily impact your operating budget coming up or a financing debt service payment. None of that would be realized in the upcoming fiscal year. Are we good to move on from courthouse? Okay. So this general fund pay go that we're recommending um, for county projects next year is 2.83 million. That is comprised of about two million dollars from your general fund, and then the deficit of that 809,699 is coming from the capital reserve fund. Right now, the Davenport plan calls um, for about 7.1 million to be um, dedicated to the diversion center. So this um, 809,000 would leave a balance in your capital reserve of about 8.3 million. If we did not want to dip into capital reserves, then the equivalent tax request that would be needed would be about 0.322 cents of a penny, 0.322 of one penny. But we are recommending we dip into reserves to take care of some of these deferred maintenance projects. Um, I had a group on the task force meeting last week, uh -huh. and uh, I asked the question, has security been settled for the new diversion center? Because it's plus or minus with RHA. Yep. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. That is a real biggie, and it, it has not been decided yet. Correct. And this is almost May. Correct. And we're allegedly opening in June. Correct. Okay. We will have an update on the Diversion Center at your May 16th. Okay. Donald will be here to talk about that need. Heidi, the, uh, we use 809,000 out of capital reserve fund. You said that would leave 8.3 million in capital reserves. Yes, once you were to apply the 7.1 million from diversion. Okay, if we did not do that, then there would be 15. 15.4. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. All right, my next slide um, is a list of projects that you'll find in your CIP document on page 20. So these are the projects that we would be recommending funding in next year's budget. I have a slide for each of these projects and am prepared to discuss any of them, all of them, or none of them as the board would like. You have 250000 for the public defenders renovation. You have 928000 for a roof replacement on your jail. Let me slow you down, please. On the public defender, a quarter million, two fifty. dollars um, That renovates the entirety of the building. Yes. Any the, of that for parking or parking lot? There's nothing for the parking at all. Um, it is renovating the newly purchased building for public defender on the inside only. Well, they be using the entirety of the building. We, we, would, we would be adding a uh, handicap spot with oh, those funds. That's the only option. Oh, we would also add a handicap spot with those funds. Uh, there's no accessibility there now. That's a, that's a, for parking. Yeah. yeah but that's just marking. It needs a little ramp, a little ramp work. There's no level spot, but it's a it's a relatively minor fix. Best question. Yeah. Also, question: What did we spend on where they are now? 
which was the Board of Elections. Did we have to put a lot of money into that in the public defender's office and in there now? They're in there now. So we didn't, we had already in last year CIP scheduled to do a roof and gotcha. some fixes to the sewer. So we did those. Okay. We were going to do those kind of regardless. Um, other than that, we did very little upfit for them. We did paint the inside, but that's, I know, that's excessive. Uh, but that was the only thing we did for them. It's temporary home. It's gotcha. not luxury right now. Um, but we'll, we'll get them moved soon. I did notice, I'm sorry, John, I did notice the, the trees were cut down in the alley. Thank you. <laughs> big mess. And the line is a big mess. I, squirrels are probably ticked, but thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Where were the trees? In the alley. You know the alley? Yeah. It, they were right in that side of the building. And they were all the in building. those power lines. It was a total mess. It wasn't just the trees. It was the trash as well. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It looks a lot better. Quite an alley to walk. And it down. smells a lot better. Yeah. How soon do you think we'll be in, in the near facility? Oh, well, we're aiming for fall, so I'm not going to be more specific because then they'll hold us to it. But um, we've got tenants in the building right now, so they are finishing their leases as soon as they move out, um, which is by July 1st at the latest. We can get in there and start working, um, but hopefully we'll, we'll get them in there in the fall. So their terms in June early. Right, that's correct. Some of them are moving out. They're moving out as we go. Some of them are moving earlier. If they all move out, we could start work a little early, but they're not required to. You go find some stuff. <laughs> Just saying. All right. Do you want me to go project by project? Yep. I have one slide for each, so we can just touch on them quickly. Next up is your jail roof replacement um, for 928000 This was the highest um, critical need for the roofing project that we received from the roof engineers. And so we are recommending replacement of that roof in next year's CIP. So I think it's um, the warranty runs out now anyway. Yeah, it's, it's 20 years old. Um, so its warranty is expiring. It's... Uh, never been a great roof to start with so we're lucky to get to the end of this period and then it's time for replacement and when you find the new replacement company you're not going to do the same thing we did 20 years ago right there were two different companies involved 20 years ago i think that was part of the issue is one started and the other finished i'm not really sure why all that happened there was litigation if i recall we, we won't be doing that again yeah, we fired the first company we did but the county commissioners at that time did and how All right, the next project also related to uh, the jail facility, and this is a joint compound replacement. It's also hit 20 year lifespan. It's needing replacement due to the moisture issues within the compound. That uh, project is just under $60,000. The next project is your court historic courthouse. The elevator is in need of repair. The parts for the existing elevator are no longer available to us, so we need to upgrade that, and the estimate for that is $170,000 next year. Next is on the J.B. Allen Courthouse. An upfit is scheduled um, for about $100,000. This is to create an office space out of a break room for the new judge. And then we're also accommodating the new technology system that the courts are putting in place. Is that the Mavis break room? It is. So is there another break room they can use? They're going to go up the floor, I believe. They're shuffling, they're shuffling people around and using every nook and cranny that they can. Isn't the court, they're going through the process of going through e-courts, right? That's, That's right. What you're talking about? Yes. I know there's been several that I wanted to put that on hold. Just anything totally different can yeah. have a mess. And yeah. I know that's just, that's just transition stuff. Yeah. So, okay, thank you. Is the bulk of this the Odyssey? I think it's a combination of the, um, sitting in the space for the technology for the judges and the clerks and also converting the break room into an office space. It's pretty minor cost, 
that we're budgeting, so nothing in terms of major renovation. Just wonder how much it costs just to, I guess I'm wondering whether they're making a move from Baylor to Judge really is that it's cost any at all. It's a pretty minor um, tweak. Brian, do you know anything about what Comprising that. I think there was also something about converting a closet to um, a usable room. space as well. So yeah. um, I don't think that we have exact numbers for what all this is going to cost. We so that's the hundred thousand is kind of a placeholder, and hopefully things would come in less than that. But part of that is also if we need to reconfigure any of the courtrooms for Odyssey. Right now, they've got a set up that's somewhat temporary, um, but they are not going to know if that's going to work well for them for another few weeks. Well, April 29th was the go live date on that. What about the, do we have any space for shade and reimbursement to a new judge and a new person? Is there any additional space to hold court? The <coughs> only temporary option that I could offer them would be use of this room. So we're talking to the state about installing technology in here that would make this usable for them. What about a temporary renovation of the jury assembly space? I have not put any money into the budget for any project like that at this point. Well, we did that for the jury assembly space. What are you going to do for Space okay, all of that is expensive and we didn't have funds available to do that unless we want to ship something else around. Well, that's going to move a lot of technology in here too. It's going to make this space not as usable for us, am I correct? Not exactly. Not, not our home. They are being more uh, wireless in, in some of their upfitting with this Odyssey. So they, right. so they are going to use their own Odyssey mm -hmm. network. Uh, through the Wi-Fi, we're told specifically that they could minimally run with the Wi-Fi on some of their uh, equipment. So, Is that so state cost or county cost? We have to put in the lines, of course, and they it's their technology, so they bring in the technology. And if it's wireless, it's the majority of their state. It's the majority of the state on that, but again, if there's spacing needs, which is actually has good space, some of the other courtrooms do not have as much space for additional personnel. The problem is, just to turn on a most thing is, this room is used for so many purposes. Today being one, rebound, <coughs> all kinds of things. So there are meetings going on in this room constantly. Uh, if we take it as a courtroom, but the permanent judge in there, he's lost in his time. Mm -hmm. It would force us to go to the evening meetings only. Are oh, we talking about, we use this room as a courtroom. We're talking about permanent like, clerk spaces, permanent clerk uh, well, we're not computers, talking about permanent clerk monitors. Doing anything permanent in here. This would remain for primary use for the Board of Commissioners. I think if we use it as a courtroom, I think there would have to be some, some clerk spaces that are assigned to them where there are like their own computers, their desktops and things. Okay. Which would eat up space well, somewhere. Or could, yeah. I've had a conversation with Judge Overby about this being the option that we could offer them at this point in time, and he said that they would make it work. I don't think they'd have a problem with one meeting, of, with our one morning meeting a month either, so. Well, I don't, I don't think the problem is for them, I think the problem is for us. I mean, if there are permanent, let's take those spaces over there, if there are permanent clerk workstations there and maybe here, then how do we run our meetings? I think it's our problem, not theirs. I think they, those are issues that we're going to need to work out, yeah. but not something I could put in your capital plan to fix right now until we get a little further along. When they did the A-Speedway trial in here, 
did the clerk sit up here beside Tom or were they over there? Does anybody remember? <coughs> Because okay. I know where the defense and I know where they sit. The, the difference is Odyssey because mm -hmm. it, it creates more clerks gotcha. in the courtroom that have been there before. Dick, are you going to leave at least one bench? She's going to lose about an eighth of your seating capacity. We don't love this idea either. This is why we're continuing to talk with DRA about options for the board to consider. Excellent. I would request that you let us in on it before we start making changes. And I'm, I'm in. Okay. Involve this board before you start making changes. To this room? To this room. Okay. We're ready to move on from courthouse. Next is your Parks Athletic Field upgrade. This is the second year of a three-year commitment you wanted to make to upgrade the park facilities. This is a million-dollar project coming from general funds for the AO Elementary Field. V of Jordan hasn't been that much, has it? So we didn't allocate that much to be right. Jordan. We cut some. Um, we're not able to do the whole project okay. uh, because of that. But it, I think we had about 800. I don't quite remember the exact number, but it was around eight. Uh, it's it's gonna we're gonna spend every bit of that. Okay. Um, and and the project's not not fully done. We didn't get to finish the project fully. When well, I asked that question for the fall maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's gonna be a lot happening in the fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Questions about that project? Still a commitment to move forward with that one? Okay. Um, the next one is the various building, county buildings, scheduled <coughs> roofing and HVAC replacements for 322829 This is kind of a hodgepodge of buildings. So we have um, the county office building, we have the EMS main building, environmental health, Open Door Clinic, Register of Deeds, Seacom Tower at the Old Landfill, Cedar Rock Park Civil Court, Detention Center, a New Jail for a Chiller. Those are all HVAC replacements that I just mentioned. On the roofing, we have the Prison Annex for 125000 and Open Door Clinic building for, six, for, for 66239 So two roofing replacements and then a several HVAC replacements comprise that 322000 that we're planning to do next year. There aren't any in, inmates, whatever, that's over there in the prison thing. I don't believe so. Because okay, I know um, I've been there before. Mm. Um, I just wondered if that's the future wanting to have that to be used specifically for that or they're done with it. I'd like to know that before we put money into something that's I think not going to have a future. Yeah. I think the reason that we're keeping the we're replacing the roof is so that it could be used in okay. the future. Right. The sheriff tells me it's a whole lot easier for him staffing wise to use that facility than it is for the detention center. Mm -hmm. Well, anybody we've ever represented in the past liked it over there better than that. <laughs> it just felt it was just better. But I wouldn't like it either way. It's just still interesting that mindset. I do have one question. Yes, sir. You, uh, I wrote down a couple of um, places or locations that you're yeah. going to do these upgrades. Sure. Uh, can you focus on the environmental health? Uh, I'm actually just under my impression that they were okay. Um, theirs is for a HVAC replacement for $36,750. The roof is okay. It's a we're good. Okay. Their awesome. floor was what fell in, right? Yep. Yeah, last year we fixed that. Except for uh, 90 months. Mm -hmm. Questions about any of the other HVAC replacements? Okay. All right. Next up, uh, we have two projects that we are recommending funding not through the general fund because we didn't have the capacity to take those on. They're both very large. We are recommending funding through installment loans. 
The first is um, the CAD project, that's the Computer Aided Dispatch in CECOM. We're replacing that. And then we also have a public safety radio replacement. So on the CAD project, $5.2 million. Um, we're at the end of life for the software that we're currently using. This is part of a shared expense with Burlington. We're both embarking on the new system together and choosing the same system. So the equipment will need to be replaced as well as the software. And that's the estimate we currently have is 5.2 million in an installment loan for next year. All right, currently, if you live in the city, call 911. They, they go to the county, they then divert it time, time, time wasted to the city. Is that going to continue with this new system? I'm looking at staff who are much more ingrained in this project than myself. So, so again, it's, it's in that five, ten year project where we're coexisting in another building and using the same software so it's more instantaneous rather than someone doing it to the human touch. Um, so again, we've been working hand in hand with them to do that. That's what makes this software so much more better and that it handles all that kind of stuff. Very, very complicated. We've had multiple demos, uh, did a five-year project to pick the correct one and we're on the very end of that process. So my question continues. I think we're late. It should be in the same building now. They're coexisting. It will take one dispatcher pushing a button for another dispatcher to take the call from Burlington. So you still have to convert from one to the other. Same system, but it's it the same system. Little... It has more intelligence to make that decision, but there's always a case where if something's incorrect, the human will have to make a choice if it's not set up correctly. It's, it's got intelligence built into it where you say these numbers are correct and they should go directly to the city of Burlington. But again, if it falls outside the line or somebody says the wrong thing or the cell phone or says the wrong thing, sometimes the person has to make that call. But it's a heck of a lot better than what we got. Moving in that direction. Yeah, what or way the ground to change that? So you call 911 and you get a dispatcher and the ambulance or the fire engine or the whatever goes out, instead of it being time consuming and changed to a city operator as opposed to a, so what, what's it gonna to take to do that? So what, what you're talking about is a merge system where right. the staff is one staff, one, so it would be a merger of the city of Burlington and Alamance County 911. So why are they not willing to do that? I think that's a political conversation that you could probably have with the council, but staff is willing to move in that direction at this point, our and that's staff. what we're hoping. Yeah, our staff is willing to move. And How about their staff? Yes, we're working together on this project. So it's the city council versus the commission? Is that the issue? I believe it's a political issue more so than it is staff's willingness to work together. The city of Grimm's in there too, right? I mean, I mean, all these are, everybody's got their thing. Some are alive, but some aren't. That's a major, uh, I guess everybody's got what works for them. So to speak. that's a big, that's a big, that's a big, <laughs> that's, yeah. a big that's a big conversation to have. It all is a big conversation. <laughs> So do we postpone for a year? We don't get everybody on the same wavelength, or do we double the cost in a year or two or three? I'm going to say neither. <laughs> we certainly don't want to double the cost, and we've been working on this project for over a year. We have a co-located facility that we're planning to move into over the next year together. We're embarking on purchasing a major software enhancement for both systems to work seamlessly together. So we are making advances and we're already moving along this road. I don't think anybody wants the project to be further delayed at this point. Amen to that. 
I just have one question. Uh, I thought the new facility was going to be in, in a new building. Like, mm -hmm. It is in a new building. And that's the cost. Is that the is that where this? Mm -hmm. No, this is this is simply a cost to, to purchase the software. Just want to make sure I've had them separated. The that's building right. cost came from a state grant. So in this building that we're buying and paying for, City of Boynton will bring their people in to use our building that they will cooperate and have one entity. So let me just clarify, the county did not use county funds to buy this building. It came from a state appropriation. Well, so 500,000 did. 15 million. 15 million. All state. All state money has purchased this building. We are both moving in together and working together to set up a joint 911 facility. We're also hoping to move some emergency management functions in a later phase of this project. Just think we ought to be one entity. A lot of wasted times and potential lives when you have to go. We had a personal family situation. I called 911 to get assistance for the individual. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry, this is, I've already explained what the medical crisis is, answer questions about the individual that was having what could have been a stroke, heart attack, we didn't know. Um, and then, oh, we've got to convert you to Bloomington, you're inside the city. So I had to repeat everything again and answer all the <clears> questions <throat> about the individual that's having the emergency a uh, second time. Makes no sense to me for us to spend this kind of money and not have cooperation and you do everything, cut the time, save lives. It just doesn't make any sense to me to spend this kind of money and not have that cooperation. I'm willing to wait a year for the new technology instead of doing it twice. I think that might be a conversation for the yes. Burlington City Council. Because I don't think this is any different than it was when we first started talking. That's right. I remember that Didn't conversation. Didn't change the lick. No, I totally agree with that. The, the catch is we need to maybe resolve that before we set aside all this money. This system does do that, sir? Um, let's say this scenario happened where it didn't automatically send it to the city of Burlington, okay? Everything they type in is shared simultaneously with the city of Burlington, whereas before they had to get converted from database to database and stuff like that. And again, someone has to retype in the information to the city of Burlington. This system is flawless. It goes to the person in the field, same information at the exact same time. So this is the goal of everything that we, exactly what you're saying is that shared information instantaneously, which is what all our partners want, absolutely. That was our number one priority as we went through this whole process. So it's, it's going very well. Um, you know, it is an expensive endeavor, but it is regardless. We would have to spend this money regardless. In the end of life, it's actually past due, and if we don't move forward, we're not going to have a 911 dispatch system. So it's very, very important that we go through this and finish this up. So you're correcting most of the problems, but you're doing it with two separate staffs. The staff will be working together in the same building, starting to collaborate, starting to build some teams, starting to forge this partnership that we hope we can envision going forward. It's a start. You're welcome. Share that quick question. The uh, the 5.2. That's our part, or that's the total? It's that's the estimate of the whole in, in body. The, uh, the city of Burlington also got a grant. They're working with us, so we'll be sharing that 5.2 with the city. So which part of it now? Well, once we make the decision on the uh, on the company. Um, that cost is shared amongst whether it's licensing or something like that. Until that's finalized, we don't have the exact number of who's doing what. Yeah. There's a primary and secondary piece out to that. It's very, very complicated with the radios, but um, it will be subdivided amongst the groups 
And that's part of what uh, the, the consultants helped us with as well. So it is just an estimate at this point, and that's why we're recommending installment loan and not trying to tie up county general fund for this project. Once we have a more solid number and are able to figure out what the county share of that is, then we'll come forward with an, the movement for installment loan. So does the the total ask is what, 2.83 million? Is that right? Mm -hmm. The total back to the beginning, the total for all of these requests is 2.83 million? Mm -hmm. uh, it is 2.83 million, or, yeah, 2.83 million for your PAYGO. This 5.2 is, is, is outside of the general fund appropriation, so it would be a loan. Are the, are the loan payments included in what we're what we're presenting here, or is that no? Is that going to be part of the budget? That will be part of the budget presentation. Okay. Yeah. Right now, the assumption would be for the um, software to go for a five-year level debt service payment. The first year, we would only have an interest payment, and then see principal in the future years. And right now, that's looking high estimate of one hundred twenty-nine thousand nine hundred dollars. And what's that, what's going on represented in this? That would be the first interest payment. We would have one interest payment next fiscal year, and then we would receive the entire principal and interest <coughs> due in fiscal year 25-26 moving forward. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. So the 129 installment payment, that's, that's to repay what amount of principal? That would be, five, right now it's calculated as a 5.2. Then once all sources of funding are put in, then of course the county portion would be reduced. So 129,900 right now is the highest estimate we would see. We would take scenario right. amount, and then once we figure out what it'll be, it should be less than that. It will be. It should less. be half. Should it should, should be. Where yeah. are we going? Hazies on this, or are we, or is there something different than Hazies? Uh, we're working on okay. the formula for yeah, that. Do we get participation from other municipalities? Graham and Mavin are participating as well. What about All River or? Uh, we already provide the dispatch for them. If the city of Bloomington is getting a grant, do we qualify for any of the grants? They got a federal earmark for their share, I believe. Is that right, Sherry? Um, I believe in our last conversation they were planning to take the grant that they received off the top, so that grant would be shared with um, Alamance and City of Burlington. Do we know how much that grant amount is? I don't know. I don't. I don't know that I've seen that specific grant amount. It's out, right? it's not five point two million. <laughs> I think it's probably more like a couple hundred thousand. Any chance that we can receive a grant as well? We've applied to multiple grants. Um, it's very complicated with primary PSAT versus secondary PSAT through the nine one one funds. You know, your all your cell money goes to that, and for some of that will help with that. It's super complicated. Once they pick the final product, it's all based on the licensing and how it works. Um, that's coming very soon. But like I said, we're trying to give you a heads up. This is, you know, we try to think of it as worst case scenario. It will be better than that. You know, when it comes to all these grants coming through and stuff like that, we've applied. Um, we went through the same process, gosh, 15 years ago, um, same kind of thing. And I mean, some of the stuff comes in, some of the stuff comes in at the end. Uh, but it's very encouraging. They like us that we're cohabitating and, and working together uh, on this process. So that helps with that. I think it helped with the first grant. So um, again, we're heading in the right direction all this. This is just to kind of let you know, this is where we are at the process. We'll bring it back to you once we get the finalized version of it. Um, it's a long time coming. So we're we'll working on the grant. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> We've got a great grant grant. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do have one question. And I oh. want to ask to Bill's statement what you've done with Rex and Park. Amazing. Yeah, she's she's put her heel actually. Um I have one question. I just want to go back to what we were talking about before. I just want to make sure I have this right. So 
What you're saying is our biggest our, our biggest payment the first year is just going to be interest only. And what we're going to do is we're going to we have this grant from the state and the city of Burlington's got a grant and we're going to talk and we're going to put these things together and decrease the overall number. And that's what Commissioner Turner is getting to. The Estimating to probably be about half of that 5.2. Yep. Now, the reason I'm asking is that's how we're going to do it. Have so in essence, you're not going to be actually going for an installment loan until next year this time. Well, what we would actually do is once we've gotten all of the funding worked out, bring that to the board. We would also need to work with the LGC. There would be resolutions to pass. We would do bank RFPs, um, work to establish the loan, go ahead and take out that loan this year. But we would only have one interest. We would schedule the, um, the fund payment, re debt repayment back to where we would have one interest payment this year, which would be the 129900 and then of course next year we're seeing the principal payments and interest, that cost would significantly increase. This year being 24, 25. That's okay. correct. Now, um, thank you for laying that out. I have a different idea. Okay. In these climates, if we're gonna take out an installment loan, we're probably gonna be paying north of 5%. And I'm sure you can see that in some of the corporate paper that you're, you've issued recently. Uh, we could, just, just spitballing here, just looking for ideas. Anybody has any, a, a better idea, I just want to serve it up because I'm just trying to. Yeah. Would it be, Ms. Evans, would it be prudent to not get the installment loan and borrow the money from ourselves? We would save roughly six percent a year on three million dollars, two and a half. Just wondering because the reason I ask this question, instead of going out and borrowing money at these high rates, we have seventy-four million dollars in our general fund. Why don't we borrow from ourselves? And installment loans, anything we pay back, we pay back to ourselves and we save the interest rate. It's just an idea, because interest rates are probably going to stay higher for longer. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be dealing with this for several years, not just this one year. So it's just an idea. Um, just an idea. I don't know if it's relevant, prudent. I don't know if you've ever done it like this before. But I'm just trying to figure out a way to save taxpayers and million dollars. Just going to make the bankers happy, Bill. No, it won't. <laughs> no, no. I know it won't, but, you know, we save taxpayers. Yeah, so that, yeah. What impact will that have? on our ratio and money showing. Mm -hmm. I knew that was going to be an issue. Yeah. So we would see a decrease in fund balance. Um, but what we would have to ensure is that if we are truly going to repay ourselves back, that each year we would have funds allocated that we know we would not spend. So we would need those additional revenues coming in to replace those uh, expenditures so that we truly are paying ourselves back. I can run some numbers and Oh, I guess the, how long would it take to pay off the installment loan? I guess that's the. the, the, the um, let me run some numbers. Ten years. I would hope less, less than that. Seven. I would hope less than that. Okay. Um, it would really come down to how aggressively the board wanted to repay ourselves back, whether we truly set it up on a five-year or seven-year or ten-year. Well, when we typically are adding more funds to our fund balance each year, which we need to do anyway to maintain the proper ratio. But, I mean, it's not like we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen with our sales tax revenue, but it's not like it's uh, not going to be there. I want to know what impact that's going to have on our ability to borrow money and the ratio of the state, things of that sort, before we get into that. I think it's a great idea, but I think we need to look at the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Well, on a balance sheet perspective, an asset, the loan is an asset. Absolutely. <laughs> and it would be, uh, it'd be part of that. Yeah. But with all this partnership, we still bought the building. The county? Okay. We bought the building. And then when it comes to the upgrading, I remember the, um, the upgrading was like was around $18 million. I know that was high because you told me. I said, what are you doing? And uh, But that was that was kind of high because they were going to kind of downsize it to go in. 
So I was just curious, is that's on us too, sort of, kind of, because all that's been given to us, so to speak, grant and all that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, Ms. Thompson, you're right. Uh, that's the only time I've had experience with someone gives me $15.2 million and it costs me seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but same as the COVID fairy, the grant fairy is still all of us too. <laughs> so, just curious. We're carrying the major, majority of the load of that. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Are we ready to move on to the next installment loan recommendation? <laughs> 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 I hate to do this, do you? <laughs> We have another project that we were also looking at a borrowing um, with the two projects together, an installment loan. This is for um, being able to accommodate a Viper uh, frequency expansion that the state is initiating. So in order to use that, we need to upgrade our very outdated radios. And these new um, mobile radios would be used for all of our public safety partners, Sheriff's Office, GMS, Fire Marshal, Emergency Management, and of course 911. The estimated cost for replacing all of these radios is $5 million. And we were recommending an installment loan for the purchase of those as well. Now, City of Burlington has Viper, correct? Already, or Viper is a state, but I mean, but they're. I've always heard something about the city of Burlington with that. I, I believe they partner with Greensboro mm -hmm. and are on a different system okay. than the rest of that, that the state. Is correct. And that they're is not on the Tron. Tron. They're not That's on the right. same system. Okay. Yeah. That's the been the problem we've had before. They're on Tron. Yeah. Uh, what about what about uh, Graham? Graham is. I know we talked about Burlington. Yeah. We talked about Nevin. We talked about Howard. Didn't really mention grant, I think they're in an agreement with Burlington, and Burlington provides them. So they're also on the process. But they're talking about leaving and going to the harbor. Just in discussion, it's not a done deal. None of that impacts the need for us to purchase new radios. Right. This would include the radio in the detention center, right? This does not. That is that is a different radio system for which the sheriff, I believe, has asked for um, a state funding for. Right. Would there be any chance of us getting any state funding for some of this? Uh, I don't believe so. The state doesn't provide the radios. The counties do. See something we're going to talk to the sheriff about right there. Yeah, I'm not sure why they, um, are they on an FM system or do we know what they're doing? What are you talking about? The detention. detention? Mm -hmm. Their radios are more for internal communication. Mm -hmm. That's sure. the, the, the radios of detention offices are more of an internal communication within the jail. These are radios that are part of a statewide right. system. Yeah. That's, that's a different emergency response than what's used in the jail. So two different things. I was just going to add that, you know, seven years ago we had to purchase the radios. The current radios are now at the end of the life, and this would be to go ahead and replace those radios so that our communications operators can talk with emergency responders out in the field, and that the emergency responders in the field can talk to each other as well as to our CECOM base. Yeah, I think so. A real need. I don't have yeah. any issue with that at all. But I don't understand Burlington and Gibsonville and currently Graham because I know I was standing with the sheriff his front door across the street. Uh, and this was going through and he had to call Burlington to figure out what the emergency was. This was not on the same system. Uh, I think that's a second issue that we need to be discussing with the city of London. Okay, so um, so for that financing, we would be looking at seven years, um, looking at the level debt service, and it would be structured the same way, just have one interest payment in fiscal year 24-25 and then have all of the principal and interest payments in fiscal year 25-26.
and right now our estimates are about $126,500. For the interest payment. For the interest payment. And of course, we would see those costs multiply for the next year. Questions about any of the recommended projects or um, either on the uh, PAYGO funding source side or on the installment loan funding source side? Don't we have a small loan that we're paying off this year? Cars, pay for cars and things for a number of years. I don't know. Let me pull that up. So I know we have some equipment loans that we were paying off. Um, we have the current radio, uh, voting machines. Here with me just a minute. I'll pull that up. Are these loans that we're uh, terminating? Um, some of those will we'll keep, we'll keep going for that spreadsheet. Bear with me just a minute, commissioners. So for this fiscal year, we will pay off the equipment uh, loan that we took out four years ago. If you remember when Brian Hager did his penny plan and we were able to make purchases of cars and various equipment. That will be paid off this fiscal year as well as our voting equipment. So when we begin next Maybe June 30th this year. Yes, sir. As of June 30th, those balances will be zero. So we will be taking into next fiscal year, fiscal year 24, 25, excluding these two that we've just talked about, $1.6 million of outstanding principal, um, which will be for, we'll have one more payment for the radios. So we would time the purchase with the current radio lease leaving. And then we have the rescue truck installment loan and then, come on, here. That's a big green thing. That's the big green thing, mm -hmm. yes. The board committed <laughs> to paying $100,000 each year for the next 10 years. So we're on the, we're about halfway through that loan. And then we will still owe on the Career Tech Center. If you all remember when that was constructed, it was done through a qualified school construction bond. So um, those will be paid off by fiscal year, they get paid off in fiscal year 26, fiscal year 25, 26. So our debt is continually stepping down. Well, what are the payments, the total payments on the, on the loans that were terminated? So the, the payments that we've I think you're right. You mean the annual payment. <laughs> yeah. So what we will pay off. Yeah. What, what, are the debt, what are the debt payments that we no longer have to make next fiscal year? Okay, so next fiscal year, we will make payments of $922,525. But we're eliminating some payments. That's what we're saving? That's what we will pay on what those three existing. Pay? Oh, what are we not paying on the two that we're... we're Let's go back on. this year, then. So that would be $494,629.51. Oh. So not that happening. That we're not paying. Not paying. Right. And our, right now, are we paying those? We're paying those through the down, through the down plan. Mm -hmm. Those are through the model. Um, mm -hmm. are, are the the loan services that we're making that we're recommending today is that through the down plan or the outside of the down plan? They are now in the down plan. In the down plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So by eliminating that 495, essentially we, we have some debt service capability. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So if you're paying interest only, we got it. We, we're making money. <laughs> well, I, I will is the mafia. So that'll be good too. So, so I will go ahead and prepare this for it. Um, with those two loans coming on, where we would pay the complete principal and interest in fiscal year 24, I'm sorry, 25, 26, we would look, be looking at two million dollars worth of debt service. So. We're doing small interest payments this year, but be prepared for that $2 million worth of debt service we would be picking up in the next year. Annually. Yeah. Annually. I wish we could have it. It's only long. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't. Um, but as a way to help facilitate the loan process this year, we can structure it in such a way that we would have one interest payment in the spring and then pick up principal and interest in the next fiscal year. 
meaning 2526. Yeah. All right. I have a few projects I wanted to put on your radar that are not in, um, are not recommended for funding this year and I don't have funds set aside for. So rather large projects, we've talked about the need for them, but they are not included. That's your Mevin EMS substation for $5 million estimate. Your elderly services building, um, renovation of that so that it can become a useful building again, recommended or estimated at $5 million. And then the courthouse expansion, which we've already talked about, not having a, an estimate for that at the moment. Every service building, where is this location? Over by the, the current ag and environmental it's health. It's not the future building. It is not the future building. It no. used to Behind be um, the ag community or. services and what an asset. Ag no. asset, yeah. Why would, when the future building was around three new and beautiful, why would you need to? Add five million dollars to an old building. I mean, what in the world are what? Everything y'all say five. You notice that five million, five no, million, five it's million. It's just an estimate. It is just I an know estimate. that, but I'm saying, you just knock it down could you just it tear it up and build <laughs> something like the picture? I mean, th that's um, that's crazy. I, mean, I don't mean that like that sounds, but that I just can't even understand that. Do you have enough room to put five million dollars worth of building? I mean, that's an old building, granted, but not upgrading five million dollars worth of. I mean, like Mr. Turner said, um, God. So, so we're estimating that's going to need a new roof, new HVAC, a lot of new interior work, electrical work, stuff like that. If we could tear it down and build a three million dollar Petrie Center, that would be preferable. Petrie Center doesn't cost three million anymore. I know it cost closer to ten because cost has escalated. And it was given. I yeah. just can't understand how it was done. I'm just clueless. This five million dollars. We talk about five million dollars like it's a dollar ninety five. It's yeah. just over. Construction I mean, costs are I know, it's insane. insane. It really is. I think that's why we're. <laughs> it's why we're interested in rehabbing that building. Quite honestly, we'd rather just build something new to meet our space needs. But that those costs yeah, are. Really astronomical. So this is the this is the least expensive option to meet space needs. Has anyone looked at a general uh, or a C column type metal structure, put whatever facade you like on it, brick, put there, match everything else. Those buildings are so much cheaper to construct than the ordinary go in, bid it and and they're structurally sounder than just a brick and mortar. Have you looked at any of that? So the last building construction uh, estimates that we did were for the new 911 center. Um, those those numbers were outrageous, um, which is why we decided to buy and renovate the BD building because it was a fraction of the cost. Um, it's just all new construction is expensive. That's certainly cheaper than a traditional brick and mortar building. Um, but that building in particular needed some security, uh, you know, level of security that was higher than most. But um, we haven't priced out any new construction um, in, in a little bit. In order to price it, you're going to have to have an engineer or architect or something with plans. Uh, so I would suggest we at least look at that and the cost of coming up with the structure itself, the plans, and then the bidding shouldn't cost us anybody. Okay. We will look at all options. Everywhere we turn as we're looking at these projects is expected. Uh, as you were talking about the old mental health bill, uh, I was on that board for years and years, uh, chairman of that board for and it's got mold, mildew, it's got some major issues. Um, and structurally, it's not all that great either. So starting over may be the better way to go. I don't want to give up that option. What, who have you got, if that building's been sitting for a while, who is going in that building for $5 million? So we don't have any plans 
I think what Heidi's noted here is that that's not a funded project. Good. So we don't have the money for it. Yeah. So we haven't gotten too far down the road. The longer that building sits there and it belongs to us, correct? Right. The mm-hmm. more it's going to go downhill. Right. right. Is anything in it currently? No. No. It is not usable currently because it has not been maintained. I might have to see it at some point. Yeah. I'm not well, sure I'm we can go in <laughs> with the level of mold, but we can. Yeah. You can go in the first I'll floor. You cannot it. go in the basement. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. I Cotton versus that kind of mold. Good luck. Next up, related to the CIP. <laughs> <laughs> we do not need to vote today. We just wanted to give you the opportunity to get a little more acquainted with all of the projects and the, the funding sources. Up next is the budget presentation at your second meeting in May, where I'll present your operating budget. You have a required public hearing scheduled for June 3rd. And then we'll have a budget adoption at your last meeting in June, June 17th. We're slated to do that. And so that brings us here and we'll be in one meeting. We, um, we actually, no, sir, we actually have changed your June meeting calendar. You adopted that in December for two evening meetings in June yeah, to accommodate that public hearing. Right. And I don't believe we've determined a location. I think we'll see as we get a little closer. Okay. Um, last year, I know we used the historic courthouse to accommodate more people. So it's likely that we may do that again. But I don't think we've announced that yet. We did even use Williams High School. I don't think we want to do that now that we've been making. I prefer here in Alabama. <laughs> I, I just have a couple questions if I like to jump in. We just want to have a couple things for a second. Yep. Um, $2.3 million in this budget plus the costs of the of the financing. That leaves eight point three million dollars in capital reserves. Why would we not just fund the the two point zero two million out of the capital reserves that we already have rather than the joint? What are we saving the eight point three for? Isn't this what it's decided to use for? Because wouldn't that, wouldn't that alleviate some budget pressure? Yeah. Um, so I understand that there's a few other talks that will happen. So with those capital reserves, what that's going to be right now is $8.3 million worth of capacity to make other capital purchases, or if there would be a complete system fail, then it's basically also maintaining a savings account. We would want to monitor how low we wanted to take those reserves, because then if we were to have a catastrophic system failure, then that would automatically go to the general fund. Um, but what if, there's nothing really else on the board other than the, the EMS, the courthouse expansion, and uh, um, whatever we might do with other services. Is there anything else on the board that we're really... Yeah, there's a lot of other projects. If you look at page 20, we projected out the next five years worth of projects. Yes. So for... Okay. This is very helpful. This is the point of a a capital improvement plan, is that we can start looking ahead figuring out what are our needs, how to time those and schedule those so that we can afford to sort of tackle these in a more systematic approach rather than needing to borrow a whole bunch of money at one time and not have the capacity to do that. Um, I don't see behavioral health service in the project that you I'm missing it. I'll see what? The behavioral health center? Yeah, so that's not a pay-go project. 
necessarily. Um, but we're considering the use, what the general thought is now is to use, what is it, 17 million in ARPA funds? Um, or 12 million, 12 million in ARPA funds and 7 million in capital yeah, reserves. Yeah. If you if you didn't spend the seven point one in capital reserves on the main building, mm -hmm. that free up seven one point one million dollars, would you have a recommendation on what you would use that for? Well, I think we have a three projects mentioned on the last slide there for which we don't currently have a funding source. So or, or the or the uh, I might you could pay cash for the videos and. The, Seek out. Is it an option? Could do that. Yes, you could. So, what is your thinking about Well, like yeah, my thinking is that, that what if you didn't use any county monies towards the purchase of the health center? Yeah. You couldn't buy all of it, but you, you could split the property in half. You could buy half of it out of our money. Lease the rest as an option, as a thought. Uh -huh. Free up county money for other things. Is the current owner willing to do that? I don't think there's been any discussions with that. That's why I said let's do some what ifs. I mean, I'm just, what I'm sure, we're going to have some significant budget pressure on this budget. If we're able to, to redirect $2 million out of the general fund in some way by finding other sources of revenue, then it's going to free up some. Some pressure elsewhere. But, I mean, I'm thinking what's going to happen in the next few months. Um, I think it's worth asking some questions. And I wonder, for instance, if, if you do condo, in essence, big behavioral health center, um, if you might use the wood settlement funds in some way to offset the lease payments that you have on the rest of the building in the, uh, in the upcoming years. And I think it might relieve some pressure. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if it's doable. I don't know if it's proper. I don't know if it's a good idea, uh, but it might save some, but it might be all those things, and it might save some, uh, some money also. On an opioid, that's programming, right? That's such a, yeah. one of those back and forth, back and forth, kind of like ARPA. Every month it was a new law. They'd come down on us. So I know how important that is. Uh -huh. yeah. It would take some creative contracting, but I think we can look into oh, that. Oh, had a creative turn to that. I'm <laughs> sure we do. <laughs> Let us do some thinking about that. Yeah, that, it's not checking. something we'd ever talked about or considered, but yeah. I mean, it, it, it seems at least somewhat viable. But it takes a number certain, which we currently have, and <coughs> if you're now leasing, eventually, by, that's a totally uncertain number in the future, and or inability to own the entire building. You could, you could also buy a, a, a lease, I mean, uh, purchase an option for us, too. Sorry, an option right. for the purchase. Yeah, it just would cost me money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Happy to explore some options for that. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to be looking for some creativity in about six weeks. Oh, you made it. And a magic wand. It is a very tough fiscal situation ahead. Or a fairy, right? A fairy said broke. <laughs> You're tired. I should not say this, but I will often do anyway. What he's hoping is go for it, and then he's going to be a judge, and he will be here to answer the problem. <laughs> Are there any other questions related to <laughs> capital improvement planning or projects? So we're hoping in the next step we'll be focused on your operating budget and we'll set some budget work sessions similar to what we did last year to delve into the operating recommendations and then we'll be ready for adoption in June. That's where we're headed. <laughs> Can't wait. If you're ready, I have a proposed closed session motion.
Can I make a statement before we do that? Sure. Um, last Wednesday, we lost somebody right. really special. Oh, my goodness. I had coffee with him after you met with him for about an hour, and I've just been so thankful I've gotten to know him, Robbie Nails, because um, Christy Bailey's a real good friend of mine, and Thomas, you are too. I respect you so much, and Steve and Craig and I were at his funeral, and it was just unreal. You just see somebody, you have coffee with them, and then they're just gone. And um, I just don't want us to ever forget him. Mm-hmm. He brought a lot to this county, he did great human interest stories on young people in school, and he was just, um, he had told me, send me your pictures of the art, because I'm going to take my parents. And um, mm-hmm. he's just a really great guy, and I'm just so thankful for him. I'm thankful for you, Thomas. You're always there, and I'm glad to see you there. So we um, just always need to make sure we don't forget people. Robbie Neal. Mm-hmm. Right, shot probably all. So young, and such a kind gentleman, mm-hmm. and it's always, always, yeah, always very kind. Very going to the hearts of us. Thank you, Matt. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, he's a great, great job. Mm-hmm. Hard to follow that with anything that's. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's all right. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11-A5, I ask the board moving in closed session in order to instruct public body staff or negotiating agents concerning the position to be taken by or on behalf of the public body in negotiating the potential purchase of the real property described as parcel numbers 145816 and 145817 owned by Alamance Farmers Mutual Fire Insurance and parcel numbers 145839 and 145790, owned by Bank of America Corporation, for use as additional office space for existing county functions. And Thomas, I said that to you. So, motion and second, any discussion? There being none. Uh, <laughs> all in favor, signify by saying aye. Any opposed? We're in the closed session.